In today's video, we will focus on creating a more sophisticated flower pot for the felt flowers that we introduced in the previous video. For this, we will be using FreeCAD and we will also be reusing the measurements taken in the previous video in this tutorial. As a quick recap, we saw that the styrofoam base was 45mm in diameter, while the top circle was 60mm in diameter. We saw that the side was 375 and that it was angled at 11.5 degrees. Then we added a small rim at the top, 15mm long and 95 degrees. Once again, we enter FreeCAD, we create a new document and let it create a body and a new sketch uh, using the similar plane as the XZ as in the previous video. Uh, we start by drawing out the basis of the model. Uh, first, I will just draw the lines and then I will add the values correctly using constraints because I prefer it that way. Uh, although getting them perfectly right the first time also works, I suppose. But this was the general shape that we had previously, a line here and a small edge over there. Uh, it's not yet complete, but I want to do something different than I did previously. So first let's set these values correctly. We had the border 1.2 millimeters previously. Uh, I like that distance, so let's keep it that way. This was using the vertical distance. Now we'll use the horizontal distance on this one. Uh, 45 divided by 2 makes 22.5. This length, uh, now I actually have the proper distance here. This was 37.5 getting somewhere and this length we made 15 millimeters right then we still have to get this angle here we saw 11.5 plus 90 now we take the angle between the 37.5 line and the bottom 1.5 there we go uh, i will add a small help line here to make it easier to measure do this we can see with the horizontal line that it will go with the horizontal constraint so we don't have to do it perfectly to 180 degrees we make this once again a construction geometry this makes the blue line and then it will never show and now we can easily take the angle between this line this here and we go for 95 degrees now we recreated the basic shape that we had before now i want to do something a little more interesting uh, with a curved edge on the side so let's start with that. Um, I will just make this 1.2 longer than the base. And then we constrain this distance to 23.7. Instead of only using the line here, we also want 1.2 centimeters at the top. 1.2. There we go. Nice edge around everything. Then we start using the B spline, which allows us to create curved lines instead of all the straight lines we've been using so far. Let's connect this point uh, let's add a value here and then if we press right click now we'll make a curved line uh, now we set the distance between uh, horizontal distance between these two points at about one centimeter which it comes down to 10 millimeters which will give this nice curve to it and that we can later use if we quickly just close this see that we have our shape so maybe I think this is a bit too high for the curve, so we can also lower it. So if we go back to the sketch, we can just draw this down a little. Because we set the distance, we don't really have to look at the other direction. I think this is a much more smooth curve than we had previously. Know, this will generate a basic shape. So if we, for instance, would again um, click sketch, task, and create a revolution. We will get our pot again, much like we did before. And this time we don't have to do a cutout because we already made the cutout ourselves by making the lines like we did. All right, now that we have the basic pot, we still want to add the nice tilted ridges on the side. For this, we will start by adding a new body to the sketch so we can create a separate outer shell, so to say. Now we still want this outer shell to listen to the design of the inside. So if we would change something on the inside, we don't want to go back and forth between the various uh, shells that we might create at some point. So therefore we shall click on the shape binder in the toolbar. Then with the shape binder, we do add geometry. Find the edge that was made by the sketch, which would be this one, this line here. We say, okay. Uh, what this does is that we can now reference this uh, edge in this new object. Otherwise, we would not be able to do so. 
So for now we can we can actually just hide the revolution so we can actually see what we're working with. Now having our this new body selected, uh, we do create a new sketch. Once again, the XZ plane. Click OK. Now here we can create external geometry. Click on the line we had there. Awesome. Now it's very easy for us to recreate this line. Uh, we once again click the B spline. So now we want to create an outer edge that as closely as possible mimics this line here. Uh, of course, then you should click the middle part as well. Uh, by approximation is fine. We, j we will make it bigger in the end anyway. Uh, actually, a bit on the inside never hurts. We will cut it out at some point anyway. So there we go. And now we can create another B spline that will make the outer, outer edge. Uh, let's make it slightly bigger. There we go. Uh, we could choose to get this point and this point and make them once again a distance, horizontal distance of one. Oh. Horizontal distance of one centimeter, not millimeter. My bad. And we'll get something that looks like this. Pushed a bit into the inside. Uh, we can actually check if we like the width we set. So if we get the revolution back, maybe we do this sketch uh, just very quick. Revolution, only do it halfway. So we can actually see what what we made. Awesome. Uh, then we have to rotate to find what we did. But this is now how much it will stick out. Maybe this is a tad intense. Uh, maybe I will try to make it slightly bit smaller. Uh, that we can now easily still do. Go back to the sketch. And move. Oh. Let's and actually move this one I see now. And then we make this, I don't know. Why do you keep moving? There we go. I probably should have set one stuck in, be stuck in stone, so to say. Um, but hey, I didn't do that, so now we have this. So now we have the outer shell, uh, which we can use to create the small bridges. Initial outer shell completely separate. If you press spacebar, you actually can hide or show. Oh, that's an easy uh, shortcut to remember. Right, so now we have the sh general shape for this one here. And then we once again create another body. And this time with a far simpler sketch. Uh, now that we have the outer shell done, we can start by actually making diagonal cuts in it to create those lines that we saw on the model during the introduction. We will once again create a new body. We want this to have a line again from this cell. So once again, add geometry. To be fair, it doesn't really matter uh, which line we pick here. Both work because we are only interested in the outer two points because we need to know what height this uh, diagonal bar should become. Then we create a new sketch. On this time, uh, I wanted to only see this line here. So we notice that we get that here with the YZ plane. Awesome, now that we see the YZ plane. Um, me, I personally uh, use the polygon tool. Now let's actually quickly hide the revolution here. There we go. Now go back here. Uh, oh, before we add the revolution, add the external geometry. Come on. Help a man out. For some reason it's on the other side. Well, doesn't really matter. Oh, we can still work with this. Add the external geometry. Now we see that we have these two points here that we can align with. We shall then use the polygon tool just to quickly make a draft. Right, diagonal line, easy enough. We want these two to be parallel so they have the exact same angle at all times. Then we can want the curve here to be four millimeters. At least that's what I picked. This one here was also four for me. I like symmetry, as you might have guessed. Uh, this one I made two, Y2, 
um, nicely dividable by 0 0.4, which is the nozzle width that I use on my printer. So now we have this bar going here and we can press close. Now we don't really have much yet. It's not doing anything, so to speak. For that, we want this to be extruded. Uh, for this, we will actually be leaving the part designer. Uh, first, I start though by once again enabling revolution by pressing spacebar. So we know what we're looking at. Let's actually make this the full 60 again. Now we can go to the sketch, grab ourselves, drop down here, go to part. While well, I haven't been selected, go for extrude. Uh, let's just go for default now, see how it looks. Okay, right, that should be a bit larger. We'll go for the length forward, length forward. Let's make it, I don't know. Uh, the pot will be 30, so this should be a good measure. Of course, we made it a bit wider. Doesn't really, the dimension don't really matter right now, as long as it doesn't, it only has to slice through completely from the very wide width point to the edge here. So everything is now in collision with the outer shell. Now, as the important part, we grab the revolution that we had here. Uh, let's actually rename this to outer shell so we always pick the right one. All right, so outer shell in combination with the extrude. I press, uh, for this, I press control and then left mouse button. Then we go to these operations here in the part tab, uh, Boolean operations, and I want the intersection. This means that only the parts that overlap will remain. Now if we click those. Um, oh, it actually did not select the outer shell, so make sure it has both the extrude that we had from this thing here and the outer shell. Press apply. We see that we have our curved angle here, can now be used. Press close, and we have our nice object here. Going back to our inner shell with the revolution. Um, it's obviously still not working as we would have hoped. There's only one line. We don't want to copy paste this a million times. That would be very mind numbing. Uh, luckily, there is the draft page, which holds the array tool, specifically array tool and then the polar array. Uh, this allows you to rotate something around the well, center. Polar array. Now, if you have your, move your mouse here, you can see the center rotation keeps moving. Always make sure we set it to 0. Oh, 0. Because 0, 0.0 is the point of this cross we see around the grid. Reset to 0, 0. Now, for instance, if we would make this 40, we press OK. We can see these nice rings on all sides. Now, I think the 40 might actually be a bit too little. I think the gap is still a bit too big. I, you could probably apply some mathematics to it. Oh, uh, of course, we can't use the counts, but we have to use the number of polars. Uh, sometimes I make mistakes as well. 50. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. So if we start from the bottom here right now, we see that it extends a bit too far. It's not really nice there. Our original outer shell is hidden in the array now. So we have to go there. I actually hide these two, please, so I can see what I'm doing. Good revolution in this sketch. Now we are back into this page here. The width was way too large. So let's actually um, make it three. Just not 2.5, but it's, oh, well, actually that's Let's go with half of what we had. Actually, make sure this one stays where it should be. I always go slightly as an angle so it would cut into the model. Now that we made the small change of two, changing 5 to 2.5, we can actually close this. Uh, let's show the inner shell again. See, that's already a much shallower cut. That's why we use parametric design to make stuff like this easier. Now that we have the basic model going, uh, we can still uh, do some nice small additions that we didn't, didn't show up before. Uh, just going back to, for instance, part design. Uh, what I noticed is that it's, if you see this ridge, it's a very hard cut, not always nice to look at or feel with your finger. Uh, you can actually either use the chamfer or the fillet to make it uh, smooth. So instead, for instance, for the fillet, Right, we have to make the body active. Initial toggle active body. It's always highlight like that. Now we go this chamfer. Well, this was a bit extreme of a chamfer, but it's you see like nice, nice and smooth curve. But for instance, if we now do this 1.2 millimeters, it's just a small cut in there, but it does give a better feel to the end result. Um, if you prefer a sharp cut, so to say. Now uh, we can also do a bit more extreme. Well, this is a very extreme, extreme chamfer. Uh, we will, we will have, well, we'll cut off 
on the sides here and just make it uh, easier to work with, easier to look at, nice from the eyes. Um, yeah. Now, if you want to, uh, well, this will not be the final result. I will upload the full results on printable.com uh, with the small minor edits left and right, but the entire idea will be the same. Now, we can't really export this model yet. Uh, it's split up in various parts. So let's go to parts, click the two objects, go for the union. We want to make it one piece. We could call it a fusion of models. We want to have one result in the end. Now we have one model. Now we can choose to export. Once again, if you export this and you, uh, it's coming out as like almost a low poly look, make sure to check out my previous video where I go into detail on how to fix that. But for now, we can just export with a pot tutorial as an STL, which I use in this case. Now we can just drag the model that we made from the folder to the place here. And ta da! It's ready to be printed. Uh, let me quick, give it a quick slice that you can also see. It. Well, I think sometimes it feels more clear, especially if you look at it from the top. You can see the small edges, they rotate as well, nicely around the object. And we are left with the result as shown before. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, so I know there's more interest in more of these. Um, also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the video down below. Thank you and see you next time.